This video is sponsored by AG1. So this one time, a little while ago, I built a really large cutting board. It measured 19 inches by 26 inches by three inches thick and weighed nearly 35 pounds. I built it just for the fun of it. I simply wanted to build a really big, cool looking chopping block. And so that's what I did. I then listed it for sale on my website for $1,400 and much to my surprise, it sold within a week. So then I thought maybe I'll list it as a special order and see if there's some more interest in it. And again, much to my surprise, there was. And that's what this video is about, building a pair of them to fulfill two separate orders. So it all begins outside where the dust collection on my miter saw works the best and where I use it to cut down some maple, some walnut, and some cherry into 28 inch long boards. And why 28 inches? Why not like two feet? Well, because most of the stock I buy comes in seven foot lengths and 28 inches goes into seven feet exactly three times, so minimal waste. Back inside, I scribble some pencil marks on each one, and that way I'll know how much to take off through the planer to clean each board up. I put the maple through first, as it's going to be the wood that sandwiches the walnut and the cherry, and once I know the finished thickness of the maple, I'll know what I need to make the other two woods. Essentially, I want one piece of maple to be just over half the thickness of two layers of walnut or cherry. Once everything has been through the planer, I'll clean up one edge of each board at the jointer and this will help me align things in the first glue up. What I'm doing here is simply sorting everything by width and I'm pairing up two pieces of maple with either two pieces of walnut or cherry. And because I like to move things more times than necessary, I further decide how each set is going to go together and I make sure I put all the jointed edges on the same side. Gluing is pretty straightforward. Because I do so much of it, I use a straight up wall paint roller. I think it's about nine inches and I tend to always glue both faces of a glue joint. I've talked about why in other videos, so I won't go into the why here other than I'll say, I think it's the best way to do it and creates the strongest bond. And if you ever find yourself looking for an exercise to build some patience, I would recommend taking not only four, but eight boards, putting some glue on them and then trying to put them in some clamps in a misaligned fashion. Once we get to the bandsaw, it will make a little bit more sense as to why I'm not lining up the edges. The next day I come back and I strip the clamps off everything, which is just a tad bit easier than putting the clamps on everything. And from there, I take everything outside to the miter saw one more time. This isn't a super necessary step, but having those ends flushed up makes things a lot easier in the coming steps. Now we're about to get into a whole bunch of band sawing, but before we do, the next thing we're going to do is take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video, AG1. So I had been hearing about AG1 for a very long time before I finally decided to give it a try. Six months ago, I signed up for a one month trial and a couple weeks into that, I decided that I should have just did this years ago, 
when I first heard about it and I went ahead and committed to a monthly subscription and I've been drinking AG1 as part of my morning ritual ever since. So in case this is brand new to you and you're not familiar with it, I'll explain what it is. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement that's comprised of 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients that support our brains, our guts, and our immune systems. AG1 promotes better digestion, it boosts focus and concentration, and it supports mental clarity. It also promotes healthy aging, supports cellular health, and the biggest and main reason I decided to take the leap is for the immune system support. AG1 gives me a peace of mind in knowing that I'm getting a full spectrum of vitamins and minerals that can be hard to get or even entirely missed in diet alone. I think it's pretty safe to say that most of us are living pretty busy lives nowadays, and with the end of the year festivities upon us, we tend to race around extra fast, have more interactions, more obligations, and it's the time of year where we tend to let our health regime slip just a little bit. This is where AG1 comes in. It improves stress resilience and mood balance when we need it the most, and it helps us run around without getting run down. So if you're like I was just hanging out on the fence about it, I encourage you to just go ahead and do it. Head over to drinkag1.com slash Ryan Hawkins to get started on your order. And right now when you order, AG1 is going to give you a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. A big thank you to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to the next steps in the build. So now I'm thinking it makes a little bit more sense to you as to why I misaligned the boards and the glue ups. There's already so much cut off in a project like this. I'm just trying to minimize waste where I can. The thickness of the two layers of wood sandwiched between the maple determines how thick I rip the strips. I typically add an eighth of an inch to what the two layers of wood measures and that allows me to plane off the bandsaw marks and bring the strips down to exactly the thickness they need to be, which is the thickness of the two layers of wood in the middle. So normally I like to scrape the dried glue about two hours after glue up while it's still pliable enough to remove, but since these got left overnight and it's pretty hard scraping and oftentimes the wood comes up with it, I said forget it, straight to the planer will go. But before that it was time to get the borders in progress so I grabbed some walnut and put it through the same milling process as before. Since the main board is end grain, the borders also need to be end grain, otherwise you have wood expanding and contracting in different directions and you'll likely be setting yourself up for a cracked board down the road.
And it was at this point that I realized I had overestimated the material just a little bit. It turns out that we are now making three boards. I find the final glue ups on these pattern boards to be about the most stressful part of the process. You get one shot and if something slips and you don't catch it, well, it stays like that forever. And I've had my share of slips in the past, but luckily everything went well on this build. This router sled flattening system from Tot Sled has been an epic upgrade in my shop. It's completely transformed my flattening game. Eventually I'll have a video on the setup of it and on building the big torsion box style table it's mounted to, but for now all I'll say is I'm really, really happy with it. I do the initial sanding with 80 grit in the belt sander and that makes really quick work of the router marks left from before. Juice grooves, personally I'm not the biggest fan of them, but folks seem to love them. They request them all the time, and since this board is designed to be usable on both sides, I figure why not stick a groove in one side. I put all my boards through the same grit progression when it comes to sanding. After 80 grit in the belt sander, I go through 120, 180, 220, 320, and I finish with 400, which polishes the board to a glass-like finish. I also raise the grain with water between each grit, but I won't show you much of that because the oil footage is just around the corner. Don't want to give too much away. The last thing I do is remove any residual sanding dust with compressed air, and then on to what most would say is the best part. There's a link to the oil I used here in the description if you're curious about it. Normally I'll give boards anywhere from 24 to 48 hours to air out before sealing up the surface, but because these ones were so thick, I gave them closer to 72 hours before applying the beeswax.
And with that, our tale of not only two, but three 3D cube butcher blocks comes to a close. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. I greatly appreciate your time. And if you have made it this far and you're not subscribed, I would kindly ask you to get subscribed. And I'd love to know what you think of the boards. Let me know in the comments. Are they awesome? Are they over the top? Was this a complete waste of time and resources? I'd love to know your thoughts either way. If you'd like to see more of these boards or other ones like it, head on over to my website. There's a link in the description that will take you there. And lastly, there'll be a couple other videos popping up here on the screen that might be of interest to you. So that's it for now. Until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye for now.